I feel like I often give the impression in my videos that all the business stuff comes really easy to me and that I have everything figured out, that I'm super confident and self-assured, and, and that's often not the full truth. The full truth is that this stuff is intimidating. It is scary. I deal with a lot of anxiety and imposter syndrome, and that fear that anxiety when you are growing and changing as a person when you are starting something new, that's that's what I want to talk about in this video. And I also want to give a big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring the channel and being an amazing creative partner. Welcome to another episode of Artist Diaries. When my channel first started taking off in April or May of 2022, I was incredibly excited. But I was also having panic attacks. I was so anxious, it was debilitating, it was bad. I spend hours in bed, wrapped up in blankets, reading fanfic on AO3, just trying to slow down my racing heart. You always hear stories about how going viral like changes people's lives, this unambiguously positive narrative, or this unambiguously negative one if it like wrecks them. And it did change my life, and I'm really grateful for that. Like you have no idea. But I have never heard people talk about the thick, nausea-inducing anxiety that you will somehow f*** up and ruin this moment you've waited so long for and spent all this energy working toward. It is really intense, or at least it was very intense for me. And it's not just unique to social media virality. Any unexpected increase in your success can make you feel like this. That feeling is like pure, unadulterated dread. And it can wreck you if you let it. I second-guessed every choice that I made, wondering with each new thing that I shared if that was going to be the video that stalled my growth or sent me backsliding all the way to square one. It feels like in the beginning, you have been given this gift and you don't know what to do with it and also it's scary and maybe it like is going to explode and maybe it's going to change your life and you just don't know what to do. It was really basically impossible for me to make art and film videos with that much anxiety stored up inside of me, but I also had to in order to have stuff to post. And again, I was feeling so anxious about not having anything to post and the things that I was going to post would be bad and I don't know. So I just did it anyway. Um, it took a lot of effort to push through those thoughts, to hang on to my creative vision and that dream and just keep making stuff. There was a lot of deep breathing, a lot of scripting, a lot of listening to calming lo-fi and piano music, and a lot of DoorDash orders, and a truly unhinged amount of time spent watching Criminal Minds and, like, The Good Wife while petting my cat. Like, those, uh, those early, like, late 2000s, mid-2010s procedural dramas that can just, like, soothe your brain. At least that's how it is for me. It honestly feels kind of embarrassing to say stuff like this because I I feel like it makes me seem ungrateful. That experience should have just been pure excitement. It should have just been me feeling invigorated, um, like fulfilled as a creative and not that messy reality. It was, it was really messy. I honestly, I felt sick to my stomach at times. I would wake up and like all of my muscles would be tense because I had been dreaming about like failing or feeling like an imposter or whatever. And so I would wake up and like all my muscles are already like tense with this anxiety. And I just, I, it was overwhelming. It was like this massive white noise in the back of my brain. But I don't want to lie to you about this. The last thing that I want is for you to experience this in your own life and then feel alone when I had an opportunity to make you feel seen and represented. I don't want you to go into that not expecting it sometimes because it, it can happen. Honestly, I should have been in therapy for that whole experience. The fact that I wasn't and that I didn't quit and I didn't have a total mental breakdown feels like a goddamn miracle, to be honest. If that happens to you, please make better choices than I did. It was, it was really not fun. But it was also really fun because it was, I was growing, I was getting, you know, emails, but then I had to reply to the emails and there were so many emails. It was, I, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It, I feel embarrassed talking about it because it makes me feel ungrateful, but it, it was a lot to deal with as one person that had never experienced that level of attention and success before. And I look back at that time in my life with a lot of fondness. It 
was transformational. I growed a lot. It was something that I worked really hard for, but it was also immensely uncomfortable, right? Growth is scary. Growth can be terrifying. Growth can be good for you and then also give you panic attacks. It can, it can be both because you're doing something that you've never done before, right? Something that should be exciting, like taking your art full time. That to the nervous system can feel like but taking a step off of a cliff, you know what I mean? Especially if you are where I was, which was not having a financial backup plan, um, doing freelance stuff on the side, but applying for jobs, not getting any other jobs in my field, feeling like, okay, like now is the moment. Um, that was, it was risky. And maybe in my case, you're doing something that no one in your family or your friend group has ever succeeded at. And you have no idea how long it's going to last or what you should be doing next. I have had family members that have tried to become full-time creatives and not succeeded. And they have warned me away from doing this. And then I, like an idiot, did it anyway, even though I have a degree in political science. You know what I mean? It was, it was scary and uncertain. And for me, a lot of my anxiety stemmed from that uncertainty, that lack of control. But fast forward to now... Two years later, with more experience under my belt and a much more sustainable career, and those feelings aren't nearly as debilitating as they used to be. But that doesn't mean they're not there. It's the kind of thing that ebbs and flows, and it's also an enormous privilege to say this, but I do think a big part of that change, of like that lessening of that anxiety, came in lockstep with financial stability. The more stable my income became, the more I was able to predict how much I was going to make, the more that it dawned on me and like my my lizard hindbrain that this is my new normal, it's not going to go away suddenly, the less crippling that anxiety became. And lately, I've been feeling a little more anxious again. It's less existential, less crippling this time around, and so I can see it as the growing pain that it is, but it's there. I've been really open about the goals that I have for my art and my art business, and you should consider watching those videos after this one because, I don't know, I like them, I think they're good, but they are ambitious, those goals. They involve scaling up my business, launching new products, and creating more consistently than I ever have before, building a comprehensive portfolio so I can do all of those cool things. And it terrifies me almost as much as it excites me. I am never going to feel fully ready for these next steps. No amount of research or money spent on courses is going to make me feel that way. So if I'm going to grow, I need to be willing to do it uncomfortably. I need to be willing to be a little scared. I need to be okay with making mistakes, with spending money. It, it, it's going to be uncomfortable. And as someone that does not like to make large purchases, that likes to save a lot of money, it's going to be a little of a, of a shift. I'm not saying that I'm going to be financially irresponsible, and I would never suggest that you be financially irresponsible, ever, like ever in my entire life. If I ever say that, cancel me. But I am going to have to make some, like, some important purchases over the next couple of months to grow my business. That's just going to be how it is. That's just a necessary business expense. And the past couple of weeks have been kind of a trial run of this, of a little kind of sneak peek at what the next phase in my life is going to look like. Like, for example, I launched a brand new product with fiber art. This was really my first experience with getting a product manufactured that was this high quality, that it was like this um, complicated. But it's really cool. I was really excited. I was like looking forward to this project. And now I'm offering my artwork as a high quality Jacquard Loom blanket, which is really cool. I want to do even more of those. It's going to be awesome. I mean, it is awesome. I have the blanket. It's great. So I took product photos for that. I did all of that stuff. I made a whole video about it and I redesigned my entire website. I brainstormed everything in Adobe XD, which is like a free wireframe tool. Um, I can make a tutorial on this if you guys want. And then I implemented it in Squarespace. And that whole process took kind of longer than it otherwise would have because I kind of totally rehauled my brand colors. My old design was warm but dark, which fit my older studio, but I feel like my newer studio has had a large impact on the kind of colors that I gravitate toward. And now it's like a light, warm, gold, olive, cream kind of vibe. 
I, it's really weird how my idea of my work aesthetic changes so dramatically whenever I have a new workspace. But yeah, I used to do freelance web design on the side. And um, while most of what I know is from one course, Standout Squarespace and Googling, <laughs> good old Google University, I was able to make this, which I think looks pretty good. Um, happy to take feedback on it. It's not perfect, but it'll work for now. And the scariest thing of all that I've been doing is making art, making a lot of art, even on the days where I don't want to, even on the days where I feel uninspired and I normally would not force myself to make art because I always felt like it wasn't good, but I am just, I have so many materials. <laughs> I have a massive collection of oil painting paper and panels and I just need to get brushed to canvas, and if that results in me making more bad art, then that's just what's gonna happen, I guess. And the idea of, like, touching some of my panels, even the larger ones, like the 27-inch round panels that I have, or my 24 by 36 panel, it makes me want to go lie down, it makes me want to go take a nap, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it scared. I'm going to build a portfolio of work and get that onto products, license it to brands, maybe displaying galleries. It's going to happen. God, it's such a weird experience to be such a deeply ambitious and simultaneously anxious person. I feel like that meme where it's like there are two wolves inside you. One of them is like a Slytherin LinkedIn influencer girl boss and the other one is like um, artist hermit that lives in a cave and like only sends messages to other humans via carrier pigeon. Like it, there's like that two wolves inside me and I am simultaneously both of them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been doing a lot of stuff scared. I think you should do stuff scared. I listen, I hear you. I feel you. It is by definition scary, right? That's just how it is. But you do grow from this. I don't think that I would have ever made art my job had this level of an audience connected with all of you guys, made so many cool friends online as a result of doing this, networked with so many amazing people and made such good art, art that I am proud of that like really speaks to my vision as an artist if I hadn't been willing to do things scared and uncomfortable. I feel like so many artists get really caught up in researching stuff that is just not immediately relevant to their situation, like copywriting. Uh, you don't have to copyright your artwork right away. When you make a thing, you have some like legal protections to it because you own it, right? You don't have to get it registered with copyright.gov right away. That's not relevant for you right now. Just focus on selling stuff. You just, you can't research things forever. You can't take all these online courses forever. You can't watch all these YouTube videos forever because you're never going to feel ready. None of these things are going to make you feel 100% ready. You're never going to feel 100% ready. If you do, if you manage to achieve that, bestie, let me, let me know, please. I would love to feel 100% ready, but I just, I don't think it's possible. I don't think you can do it. I think you need to be willing to do it a little bit scared and a little bit uncomfortable and just get that experience and not make dumb choices. Like don't go into credit card debt. Don't, I don't know, don't put yourself in a situation where you would easily become homeless. Like don't do that, but take small risks, take risks that are a little bit outside your comfort zone and then get used to that. Then take bigger risks. It, you just need to be willing to be uncomfortable. I feel like I have said that phrase a million times in this video, but it's just, it's so true. That's really what I wanted to talk about in this video. But before I let you go, I do want to share the sponsor of this video with you, which is of course Squarespace. Squarespace has been an amazing creative partner for me, both as an artist and a content creator. I have been using them to run my website for years and I couldn't be happier. They have everything that I want. They add new features all the time, like their recent course feature, where you can make and sell online courses on your website and host that all within Squarespace. So it's totally branded. You don't need an extra subscription at another service. It's phenomenal. Squarespace has really transformed themselves into the all-in-one, one-stop shop for solo entrepreneurs and artists like us. You can, one, design an amazing website, 
uh, sell stuff online, be that physical, digital products, um, memberships, courses, whatever. You can also do email marketing directly within Squarespace. Squarespace is truly phenomenal. They have award-winning customer service, designer templates, and there's, yeah, there's no place I'd rather go to. If you want to give it a try, go to squarespace.com slash Kelsey Rodriguez and use code Kelsey Rodriguez at checkout to get 10% off your first order of a website or domain. Yeah, that's all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.